So often at home, all you see is a highlight reel of everyone out here sailing, living the good life. It's diving, it's kiting, it's swimming with beautiful things, it's tropical beaches, bonfires, it's paradise. What you don't see is all the work that goes on behind the scenes. This week we're going to take you along of what it takes. <laughs> this week we're going to take you behind the scenes of what it actually takes to keep your boat seaworthy, move it from country to country, and yes, enjoy paradise. This is a normal life for us, but it's not a normal life for most people. And there's a reason why. We'll show you. Come on. Okay. Grab things off. See more screws. The waves are starting. Sailing around the world is pretty much equivalent to fixing your boat in beautiful places. We have made a decision this year to do like one day of boat work a week, maybe every two weeks if there's none to do. Uh, zip. There's always something to do. What are you thinking about today, Ben? Uh, Sweat. I was thinking about how beautiful it is outside. <laughs> we are truly in a beautiful place here in the Tobago Keys. It is absolutely stunning outside. The women and children are playing with cookies and icing. It tastes very good. And. Uh, Ben's gonna play with some. I think after the kids, there's this clear line of what's actually an issue, and ah, water's a good spot. If you look over here, total of five minutes to take the old handle out, uh, five minutes to put the new electric conversion kit in, and uh, Five minutes, so a total of 15 minutes to connect the electrical connections. So it's an electric toilet conversion kit. Let's uh, let's start a timer and see how long it actually takes. Come on. Oh, oh come on. I lost a gasket. That came with a kit. How's that even possible? How many cookies did you eat? Oh, three cores. Three cores. Maybe. Four. Or did you eat like four cookies already? Already. Willa gets her own toilet. It's pretty cool for parents. I think there's a few achievements in life when you're raising kids. One is uh, toilet stuff, if you don't have to help them. Another one is feeding themselves. Um, I think another one is uh, when they move out and make their own money. Did you get a box? What's in your box? <gasps> Whoa, is that all your monkeys? We're sat in the bar high here in the uh, Nahoa family. A toilet is a present. Okay, you looking at Mama's glasses? Can you look at Mama? Look at this is Friday high. That's hair. It's haircut day on Nahoa, and uh, Bodhi got his bangs trimmed because they were in his eyeballs. Uh, we're just gonna let the rest go because he's very, it's very hard to pin him down. I think he might need to be sedated. <laughs> um, next, it's Ben's turn. Ben's been asking for a haircut for two weeks, and uh, for the last week he wouldn't take his hat off. So here we go. It's it's important to get your hair cut in the tropics because it's hot. Otherwise, you sweat. It's gross. I know how the ladies do it. You guys are tough. We live with it up in a, a bun bob thing. You keep it off your neck. Wish Ben luck. I think we should leave the hair like this, Bodie? Uh, yeah. Yeah, do you think that his hair's done? Just leave it like this? Apparently haircutting is a family affair. <laughs> I don't think they've ever seen a haircut before, maybe. So, what do you think? I think a haircut, any haircut's a good haircut. <laughs> My bar is set real low aboard. <laughs> That's a good thing, Ben. <laughs> That's probably a very good thing. So what's happening? Is this just normal maintenance every day? I'm just adjusting the belt and checking fluids and... I how, don't know. How often do you do this? I don't know. Depends how much we use them. Some mysteries on engines are mysteries and I've had this mystery for a long time which is there's a belt that runs over the front of the engine. It 
It powers the fresh water pump to cool the engine. It also powers the alternator and it's driven off the crankshaft pulley. And it, that belt always either uh, frays and blows apart or it, it turns into powder, like a lot of dust comes off of it. So I'm thinking it's either the fresh water pump that is starting to seize or the alternator. I'm not exactly sure, but I don't have a solution. I could eliminate the alternator with a smaller belt. So one of the things I look for when I'm, I'm diagnosing a problem is like everything. So I'm looking at the inside of this pulley and it looks like it's been skipping. So maybe it is this one that is causing the belt to disintegrate. The alternator seems to be spinning fine as well. Look at it, you see that? It's just completely disintegrated. Look at all the belt dust right here. You see that? There's tons of belt dust right there. And over here, there's belt dust as well, but it's not as thick. So it does seem like the alternator is the cause of this. So I replaced this belt right here. This triangle right there. And uh, it looks good now. You know, after sailing around the world and, and being super remote for so many years, um, we don't mind being in busy anchorages. I feel like there's lots to look at, uh, lots of close calls and chaos, uh, and yeah, it's just entertaining. Two French people yelling at each other. I'm not really sure what they're saying. It's too far away. I think we're going to find this a lot. Like, what is the etiquette if you're anchored and there's a mooring ball next to you? I mean, these aren't legit moorings. These are just some entrepreneurial guys put down a mooring. They're not like licensed or, or anything like that. But this is how these guys make their money and they're gonna be pretty angry if you get in their way. It's 9.30 now, so between 8.30 and 9.30, there's a lot of boat movement. Boats go out, boats come in. They don't, they spend a day here and then they leave. So there's huge amount of shifts. The boat boys are busy all day. And uh, it's kind of a scene. It's, it's kind of a lot of fun to watch. Now, I, can you see, can you see Nahoa far off there? We scored the sweet spot. There really is not room to anchor around us. And the boat next to us is also like a long-term cruiser. So we feel pretty like, pretty good in our little spot. You want front row because it is mayhem in second row, mayhem, complete mayhem. The mooring balls, you think you're on a mooring ball and you're good, but then 600 boats come and anchor all around you. It's 9.30 in the morning, everyone's just chilling on their boats. There's absolutely no one on this beach. Crisis seems to be averted at the very last second, like every single time. <laughs> I feel like these boats need uh, airbags. Like yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like airbags, fully 360 airbags deployed. I don't mind people. I don't mind charter boats. They're great. You can take joy and the joy that they're having of laughing and snorkeling and drinking and partying at night, you know, it's it's pretty cool, I think. I 100% agree. I said to Ben, the charter boats lift the, lift the mood. I mean, these guys are having the time of their life. I mean, you're out here for like 10 days, two weeks, three weeks, and this is like the ultimate vacation. I mean, how much fun is this? And when it's your life, I think you start to take it a little bit for granted. And uh, it's really, really good to see other people enjoying it as much as they are on these charter boats. And it's pretty cool. Ah, we have so enjoyed Salt Lake Bay. It's busy as heck. It's crazy here. It's mayhem. It's chaos. And it's beautiful. Sometimes the beautiful spots are 100% worth it because they are bloody beautiful. That's why everyone comes here. But we've had like the best spot in the Anchorage for, I don't know, three or four days now. And I think it's time to let someone else have this spot. We are gonna head over back to Union Island and go kite surfing. Are you going to go water ski? <laughs> oh, you want a snack? Your tummy is imploding, right? <laughs> a snack. Okay, let's go. So check out these shades. Aren't they amazing? My mom bought these for me. I said, mom, can you grab me some uh, kiteboarding shades? Thanks, mom. Ben and I always wear impact vests. I think it's a really, it's a really great safety thing for kiting. And that's it, we're ready to go. Have fun. Take your time. 
There might be nothing more attractive than a sporty girl, I think. Watch out for the doggies, guys. Sometimes they're not nice. But they can still bite, so don't pet them, okay? <laughs> he's just a puppy, so he's just wagging his tail. He's saying, I'm happy. He's a happy doggy. He wants some pets. It's okay, Bodie. He's a nice dog. See, he wants pets and rubs. He's a good boy. Now that is one friendly dog. <laughs> yeah, he wants, see, not all dogs are bad, but it's hard to know when you're just, when you're just meeting them, right? So this is a nice one. See, he likes rubs. Okay. But he's a little bit scared, Bodie, so you have to be, don't wave your hands. Just go gentle up to him, okay? So he's scared of you, bud. I know, I'll just move it to the side. Looks like it's broken. All right, we're trying to clear out today, but I already sweated through my t-shirt. And now we gotta go down there, which is fine, but with two kids and a buggy. <laughs> so we have to clear out and then we have to clear in. Uh, it's just part of cruising here. It's a lot of clearing out and clearing in in the Caribbean because almost every a little group of islands is a different country. Uh, what time? What time is it? Eleven fifty-three. So we arrived at ten. Ten. Took two hours to clear out. We Which, were in a lineup. Hey, man, that's better than going through an airport with security and. You know, it's about the same. It's about the same. But there was only two people in line ahead of us. But there's problems. There's a gentleman who arrived from Martinique and he didn't have his clear out papers from there. So the guy was questioning him, saying, you know, there's no proof of where you came from or how many people were aboard. Um, I guess they're trying to prevent human smuggling or something like that. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh. It's a fair hill. Before. Okay, I'll talk to you after this. Hold on. <sighs> if you ever want to know how cruisers exercise, it's just they walk around. Oh, oh a truck coming. Yeah, it's like a 45 degree incline. Maybe more. It might be like 60. You like it, Jess? This is a typical fruit stand on the side of the road here in the uh, Caribbean. Something I really love about the Caribbean is this. Check out the advertising. You just paint it on the wall. Cameras? Remotes? It's pretty good. And it's the very best prices. So one good thing about uh, buggies and kids is that you basically come with your own shopping cart. I don't know how we used to lug it all. Uh, there's pros to kids. It's not all <laughs> downsides. You know, there are diapers and all that, but there's pros like baguettes and uh, two cases of beer in there. 
What does that mean? Bad? Bad man kill them slowly. Bad man and kill them slowly. Bad man kill them slowly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. Dear patrons, it's been a while, guys. Seems like we started this video update a few times, and we're contemplating. And let us go, let us know what you guys think of doing two public videos a month instead of four. So you you would still get a video every single week from us. So two of those videos a month would be patron only updates, or maybe something a bit more like how tos or answering questions that you guys have. Um, so a bit more dedicated to what you guys want to see and you would have to give us feedback on that and then to regular videos and yeah that's kind of the idea because it's just a lot to get four public releases out a month um, and if we do the two for you guys they can be a little less edited like a little more real you know, real, real like less. You hanging out with us, us hanging out with you, and we just talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Hey guys. Yeah, how are you doing? Looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those weights. Do you guys see those weights? Yeah. Might seem ridiculous locking your dinghy to a tree, but uh, here in the Caribbean, apparently dinghies go missing. We haven't locked our dinghy in years i don't know when the last time was maybe not thailand not maldives didn't use it in south africa it must have been not philippines not palau not papua new guinea it might have been the last time was in fiji maybe maybe fiji maybe the caribbean when we started the caribbean seems to be one of those hot spots where dinghies get stolen uh engines are very uh sought after and uh you just try and do little things to make it more difficult. But we are grateful to have this bigger dinghy now. Let me tell you, as the kids get bigger, we won't need the pram, the buggy, the stroller, whatever you want to call it. But right now, it's nice to have the space. Well, beer and a buggy. All right, help dad, guys. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Oh, that's a bit heavier. I... Paradise, eh, Ben? Eyes are orange and his tongue is black. 